course, the glaring statistic, the 14-year age gap, the 49-pound difference in weight is not the largest in heavyweight championship history. Indeed, there have been five other weight gaps that were larger than that one, topped off by the 86 pounds between Primo Carnera and Tommy Loughran back in 1934. Here is George Foreman 17 years ago versus George Foreman now. You can see that he weighs 37 pounds more than he did when he fought Muhammad Ali in Zaire. And all other statistics except age remain virtually the same. And here's the difference between Evander Holyfield as a heavyweight now and Evander Holyfield as a rookie pro cruiserweight in 1985. 31 and a half pounds or 30 and a half pounds of weight difference and a slightly bigger body all over for a Holyfield. And here are our punch stat numbers to give you a profile of how active these fighters are. It's hard to say how meaningful these are under any circumstances, but certainly under the circumstances of two fighters who have fought vastly different classes of fighters. The jabs may be important because Holyfield has looked better, been more successful when he has thrown more jabs. As was the case against Buster Douglas. And now the rules of the International Boxing Federation, which is the governing and sanctioning body for this fight. Three judges scoring the fight on the 10-point must system. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Neither fighter can be saved by the bell, even in the last round. And we go. The ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fright introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Main Events Monitor Productions and Top Rank Incorporated, in association with the undisputed King of Beers, Bud Weiser, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Frank B. Dawkins. This bout is also sanctioned and approved by the World Boxing Association and the International Boxing Federation. The three judges at ringside scoring each round on a 10-point must system are Jerry Roth from Nevada, Eugene Grant from New Jersey, and Tommy Kazmarek from New Jersey. And the referee for this bout, working in a world title event for the 45th time. Good luck to both of you. Let's touch gloves. Jim, I see this as a fight between George Foreman's 70s Cadillac and Evander Holyfield's 90s Corvette. The greatest heavyweight matches, the Thriller in Manila. First of all, let me introduce to you from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's the former heavyweight champion who always brought one of the most devastating left hooks in boxing history into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, smoking Joe Frazier. And the man he faced three times in those three great bouts. In 1960, he was a gold medal champion in the Olympics. 1964, he won the heavyweight title. In 1974, he won it for a second time. And then he became the only man in heavyweight history to win the heavyweight championship three times. Ladies and gentlemen, three-time heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad. And now, ladies and gentlemen from Donald Trump's Trump Plaza Hotel Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! It's the Battle of the Ages. 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in at an official weight of 257 pounds. This 1968 Olympic gold medal champion won the heavyweight title in 1973. After a 10-year hiatus, he returned to the ring in 1987, and since then his record has been a perfect 24-0 with 23 KOs. His career record as a professional, 69 victories, 
65 KOs, only two defeats. 56 of these KOs have come in four rounds or less, and he's considered by most experts to be the most devastating puncher in heavyweight history from Houston, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger and former His opponent in the blue corner wearing the white trunks with multicolored trim weighed in at an even 208 pounds he's a member of america's greatest olympic boxing team the class of 84. he won a bronze medal that year and he was the first of that great squad to win a world title as a professional in only his 12th professional bout he became the cruiserweight champion and he is now in boxing history the only titleist from that division to step up to the heavyweights and capture that crown also on, his overall on, record as a professional is 25 and 0 with 21 ko's more than half of his ko victories have been in four rounds or less and not one heavyweight opponent has made it to the final bell and for the last five years he's knocked out every opponent he has faced we talked from about atlanta the georgia high. ladies and gentlemen Presenting the undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, the real deal, Evander. Holy field. You see where the trunks are? Okay. Look, all the way. That's all right. I know where the belly button is. Anything over there? I know where the belly button is. Okay, gentlemen. You both received your pre-fight instructions in your dressing rooms. I expect a clean break at all times. Good luck to both of you. Let's touch gloves. Jim, I see this Remember, you're as a fight between George Foreman's 70s Cadillac and Evander Holyfield's 90s Corvette. If they collide, maybe the Cadillac Let's go, can man. smash him up. But if it's a contest of quickness and youth, the Corvette has all the advantage. And in the closing minutes, just before the bell for round one, you saw Foreman bow, probably in prayer. You saw the little smile, almost of benediction, as he exchanged pleasantries with Holyfield in the middle of the ring at the end of referee's instructions. And now let's see, is George Foreman for real, or is this the farce that many critics have said it will be? feels that as long as Foreman has his arms crossed, he can't punch him, and he will try to punch every time Foreman does that. Remember that Holyfield's camp, notably trainer George Benton, loved the idea of going ahead and punching the arms and the shoulders, and those areas that other fighters might not pick out as targets. He believes you can wear the opponent down that way. That left hook was short. Foreman steps in and lands a jab. Holyfield going to the body and connecting with a left and a right. Question one, is Foreman quick enough to hit Holyfield? No conclusive returns on that one so far. You see, we're seeing Holyfield more on the balls of his feet than we have before. Foreman using the jab now to try to set up some initial contact. And Holyfield steps in with a right to the chest. Holyfield backing straight away from the jab. Now he steps to the side. All right, get off the jab. Stay off that move. Foreman has been able to block most of Holyfield's hard punches with the arms and elbows. As was the case there. Lands a clubbing right behind the head. 
And Holyfield at short range fires a left hook to the top of the head. And again. Holyfield wants to keep Foreman busy. Not the elbows. Wants to test his stamina if the fight goes into the second half. What we've had in round one is more a boxing match than a slugfest, and Holyfield has been surprisingly effective with the jab. Lost the elbow. tradition, which has been the case throughout his comeback, of standing up between rounds in the corner. Holyfield landing a lead right, but George stands stock still and then moves forward again. Doubling up on the jab and scoring again is Holyfield. Now Foreman breaks out the jab to try to counter. The referee really battled warning both fighters to watch the elbows, particularly Foreman. Foreman landed a left to the belly, and Rudy Battle says it's low. Warns Foreman to bring him up. Holyfield continues to jab to George's big head. Foreman lands a clubbing left, which may have been his most effective blow so far. Holyfield hooks to the body. I don't know whether Foreman is playing possum now, but all of his punches so far look like they've been sent by second-class mail. Very slow punches. Watch your hand. And true to what he claimed he would do, Whenever Foreman comes out of the crab-like defense, Holyfield steps up inside and tries to beat him to the punch. No running. He wants to get inside of Big George's power and pepper away. Chopping right hand right on the face by Holyfield. Foreman comes back with an attempted left and right. onto the ropes. Crowd gets excited. Power to the body from Foreman. Holyfield not as resolute all of a sudden. Closing stages of round two and Evander is suddenly much more careful. I guess even second class mail sometimes gets delivered. of Holyfield's head and he's momentarily stunned. Now he steps back up inside. But if there were any remaining doubts about the legitimacy of George's chances, he may have erased them in the last 30 seconds.
highlight. The right hand. The right missed. The left caught Holyfield on the side of the head. A glancing blow, but but Foreman's glancing blows can be hurtful. Well, indeed, Holyfield dominated the first two minutes of the round just as he had the first round. But in the closing minute of the round, George landed two or three of those clubs, and now Evander seems anxious to set things right as we start out round three, and Holyfield's at a faster pace already. beginning to open up. He's out of the crab-like defense most of the time now. Holyfield beating Foreman to the punch at close quarters. But George lands a left to the body. has always had in his both careers is great presence, the belief that he he is the boss in the ring. And that communicates to his opponent. And you can see Holyfield is still. stunned by a left and backs up two steps. You get the feeling, Larry, that George feels he's felt the best that Holyfield can offer and it doesn't bother him. He's willing to open up and just come forward now. To Evander's body. as Holyfield consistently steps up and lands two punch combinations or now occasionally one punch at a time. That's not what his corner wants. They want to see three or four punches in a row when he gets in there. Watch your hands in there. Watch your hands. Left and a right landed for Holyfield. Again, George shrugs and comes forward. telling George Foreman not to club Holyfield on the back of the head with the rabbit punch. Left, right, left by Holyfield. And a left and a right, and Foreman's in serious trouble. Bell may save him in this round. Foreman wobbles back to his corner. Difficult end of the round for, for Foreman. The conventional wisdom has been that Foreman would have to do business early in the fight. He isn't. The business is being done to him right here. Runs across the ring. He may feel, Jim, soon that he has to shoot his boat because he can't take that kind of punishment and last a into a long fight. The smoke you see in the background is from a smoke bomb under the stands near the ring, which has apparently been detonated. 
neither fighter seems to be aware of or bothered by the smoke. It's the bombs in the ring that have bothered George Foreman so far. And they haven't been smoked. Holyfield ripping to the body, doubling up on the jab at times. His dominance seems to be increasing, certainly in terms of the number of punches landed. Foreman was busy mostly in the last minute of round two. In round three, he took a beating, particularly in the last 30 seconds. Before he took the title from Buster Douglas, the image of Evander Holyfield was that he couldn't fight a planned, disciplined, tactical fight. He is showing once again that he does, he does, he does use his head as well as his fists. Solid right hand at the end of that combination. Holyfield executing the plan now that he had discussed with us and with George Benton and Lou Duba, stepping up inside of Foreman's power and beating his man to the punch at close quarters. Straight right hand may have gotten George in trouble. The big man wobbling a little bit as Holyfield steps back up and in. Two left to the body landed. Now Foreman opens up. End of the round coming. And Foreman is starting to show, I believe, some fatigue. Harold Letterman, how do you see the first four rounds? Larry, I've got it 40 to 36, four rounds to none in favor of Evander Holyfield. To me, it's very reminiscent of the first fight between Michael Spinks and Larry Holmes. I think the Evander Holyfield strategy is the same that Michael Spinks used, and that is punch and get out, punch and get out, move in, throw your shots and get out. And Holyfield's been very, very effective, uh, uh, very effective in moving inside, landing two, three, four shots and moving so that Foreman can't hit him. It's all yours. Just don't Let's take a look at Holyfield's combinations. A straight right followed by a left. Ties Foreman up. There you see it again. Punch count statistics indicate that in round four, Holyfield threw 39 punches and landed 27 of them. That's a 69% connect rate. Awesome efficiency. Not the kind of thing Foreman can compete with. He needs some kind of big blow to turn things around. And although it's only round five, for Big George, it may be getting late. Well, the question coming in here whether, is whether George was a farce or Holyfield a fraud. So far, Holyfield has not been a fraud. He's fought a perfect fight. It becomes increasingly more impressive now with each passing round. The referee has told Foreman that that was the second warning. The next time he has to issue one, he will take a point away. For a low blow. For a low blow. Two days ago in the rules meeting, Holyfield's co-trainer Lou Duva complained in advance about low blows, so maybe he was successful in raising the referee's expectations with regard to that one thing. 
Nice and sweet. Nice and This is brilliant stuff from Holyfield, doubling up with the jab, coming with the right, the left hook to the body, rights and lefts inside. George gets in a straight jab, and another. At some point, the question will be, how much of this does George want to take? He's a man with immense self-confidence, who believes, because of his power, that he can turn the fight around quickly. But you wonder, as the rounds go by, whether he's going to say, I've had a great run, I'm making 12 million bucks. Plus. Thanks, folks, and goodbye. Foreman misses with the clubbing right. But he gets Holyfield to the body enough to stop Evander from punching. comes alive again as Holyfield stops punching and Foreman steps in. Closing seconds of round five. Could it be George's last hurrah? for the next punch. All right. Now don't let him hit you with those punches. Those punches take their toll on you. That was George's best shot, but it didn't have an awful lot into it. A right hand, that was a shoulder punch. There it is. Got, it got Holyfield's attention. Maybe the first four and a half rounds have been a little too easy for him. Yeah, you wonder if Evander just lost concentration. Maybe he was getting a little bored with how easily things were you, going. You heard George Benton, his co-trainer, warn him to be alert and to get out of there after he punches. It's Benton who has said about Foreman that if he hits you, you'll be the deadest SOB in the cemetery. <laughs> Well, there's 65 guys who can attest to that. And a lot of them did in the last couple of weeks. I said, keep them up in there. Nice and clean. Keep them up. Watch your head. Keep them up. Vicious right to the head and a left to the body by Holyfield, who reestablishes command here at the beginning of round six. Foreman steps in behind the jab again. To tell you the truth, Jim, I'm a little amazed that Foreman, at this age, has taken some of the clean shots that he's taken without showing much hurt. Well, of and course, he's the much bigger man, but then the chin doesn't know that he weighs 257, right? No, it's the same chin that was on him when he weighed 217. <laughs> Foreman clubbing away again as Evander Holyfield stops momentarily and gives him a chance. As Evander steps forward and punches again, he puts Foreman on the defensive. If you're going to wait for Holyfield to get tired, you probably have a long wait, longer than 12 rounds. Several days. The way George Foreman used to fight, so tense and tight, he would wear himself out. But he is more relaxed now, and perhaps that's helped him uh, to maintain himself through this point in the fight. We're at the midway point, almost. Indeed, Foreman says that in his first career, he was nothing more than a wind-up toy. who had no options and no answers once the inner workings wound down. Sees himself as a whole different fighter now. Straight left, bothers Holyfield again, knocks him off balance for a second. George has been effective momentarily when he's been able to land the jab and step up behind. Maybe Foreman's been able to take those punches because he's been doing nothing for weeks except eating and talking, so his jaw certainly must be in shape. 
Left hand landed for Foreman and rocked Holyfield back a little bit. Maybe there's still some thudding power in those blows. Right hand just misses, but the crowd gets excited. Holyfield comes back with a left and a right, both of them missing off the top of the head, but now he goes back to the body with good effect. continue to try to box while Foreman waits for one big chance. We're into the second half of this heavyweight championship bout. That's a slip. Canvas has been very slippery in undercard bouts. But now Holyfield stops punching and Foreman wails away again. There's a solid shot to the body in there. When Evander stops punching, George gets a chance, and he's making the most of it right now. Foreman landed a right. Holyfield's got to get busy. Occupy him again with his offense. There he goes. just missed the uppercut. And Holyfield lands a vicious left to the ribs and a left to the jaw and turns things around again. Another left hook and a right. Will George go down? George is tired, very tired. It's starting to show some hurt. Who, who would after that barrage? Part of the round where that right, <clears throat> that right hand 
seemed to give Holyfield trouble. There it is again, a chopping right hand from Foreman. But in the second half of the round, this fusillade of hard punches from Holyfield. And the old man covers up. Covers up like an old man confused in traffic. But what a round, Larry. Both men landing over 50% of their punches in the round. Both men landing over 30 blows. You keep wondering how Foreman can bring anything back into the center ring. At his age, taking the pounding he's taking and the discouragement that must go with it. More of the same, Holyfield steps up inside and cracks to the body. I don't know if you could hear it out there, but Holyfield's punches resound around ringside. People have been talking for months about Foreman's punching power. This is a chance for Evander to prove that he can fashion some knockout artistry himself. Oh, no. Whatever the end of this fight is, you just have to salute George Foreman for the way he's gone about this, for his determination. He could have folded his tent and, and gone away and everybody would have said, Hey, thanks, George. You gave us a lot of laughs for four years, and we're glad you made a big payday. But he's still out here. Indeed. There were a lot of people who would have said that he had won big already just by virtue of stepping into the ring for this event. But we're in round eight. He's won big tonight again. Yep. At about this point, 17 years ago in Zaire, that the Foreman machine ran out of gas. But this has been a whole different enterprise. There's been no rope a dope here tonight. As Evander Holyfield has pressed back in the action all the way. Solid right hand. Foreman stunned again. After the fury of round seven, it was inevitable that there would be some brief vacations in round eight, and both fighters have taken them. Three, seven rounds to one favor of Evander Holyfield. The only round I can see George Foreman winning was the sixth because Evander stopped moving and George started to get to him with some of those clubbing shots. But Evander's shots are so much more frequent, so crisper, so sharper, with so much more velocity and snap. George Foreman said to his trainer as he came back to the corner, how many rounds is that? I'm going to still win this thing. Let's see. would appear at this point that it would have to be a knockout. Nobody in his wildest imagination could have envisioned George winning a decision anyway. Almost nobody thought the bout had a chance to go the distance. 
But I'm thinking of Emmanuel Stewart. Of all the experts who have been polled in recent days, he's the one who said Holyfield will win a decision. Now, Brent, put him loose. Let him go. Stop out. Huh? Holyfield's brain trust said go out to win the fight. Just win the fight. If the knockout comes, let it come. Both hands are free. Both hands are free. but then it quieted down almost as quickly as it had begun. Holyfield with the jab on the button. You might begin to wonder if with a big lead on the scorecards and given George's dangerous punching power, Holyfield would begin to run a little bit, use more of the ring and stay away. His corner doesn't believe that's the way to negate Foreman's power. They want Holyfield up inside in George's chest. All right, those long punches, where those long punches can't reach a target. So far, Jim, I don't think it would make any difference if Evander Holyfield weighed 190 pounds. The same thing would be happening. So the questions about whether he's a true heavyweight, at least as far as this fight, is concerned. A solid he's right hurt, hand George. has stunned George Foreman. He can't be saved by the bell. He can't be saved by the bell, but he isn't going to go down on Watch the accuracy of these punches after that initial shot. Straight punches. Foreman is floundering, but he's a, he, with all those arms, he's a hard guy to find. It looks like Dempsey and Willard in that kind of an exchange. The smaller Dempsey, quicker all over the bigger lumbering Willard. history the smaller man is one whether it was bear against carnera whether it was michael spinks against jerry cooney in this ring a few years ago sometimes they weigh the wrong things they weigh they don't weigh ability and they don't weigh heart and we're getting to a point jim where i'm beginning to think all right george you're proving your point and I hope he doesn't get hurt. Put some tape he on gets here. an extra rest here now as Evander Holyfield must have a loose piece of tape cut from the glove. Foreman in a neutral corner. Keep turning this guy back. No instructions. No instructions. No instructions. Duba starts to give instructions to Holyfield and Rudy, Rudy Battle says no, no instructions.
does Foreman want to take? I sense in the crowd, uh, Jim, an admiration and respect for what Foreman is doing, but also an appreciation for how Holyfield is taking him apart. And perhaps also a general recognition that the issue has probably been decided here to all intents and purposes. <laughs> Solid right hands from Holyfield. Foreman wails back with the left, but he's groggy again. Long way to go in this round. Loving right hand, and Holyfield grabs and holds on. George still with some sock. as though there might have been some damage done underneath there. And Holyfield continues to wail away. And still George Foreman comes. What a man. Holyfield slipping the punch and coming right back with his own. Just watch this. Slip, punch. Charlie Chipes is telling Foreman, try to straighten up that right hand. Try to throw it straight. some exchanges. If ever a fighter had the soul of a warrior, it's Evander Holyfield. Very hard for him to put it in the deep freezer. In fact, that's what worried his corner most. 
that instead of following the game plan that his natural instinct as a warrior would take over. But so far, he's fought a perfectly disciplined fight. A brilliant fight against a big and courageous man. display between rounds the entire arena on its feet cheering stomping and applauding both fighters foreman left his corner and walked around the ring to try to relax himself for the last three minute attempt clubbing right hand by foreman just missed to bring back the glory of so many years gone by. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this, uh, Jim. Uh, there's so much sentiment here because it's been a one-sided fight, uh, a virtually a massacre, as you, as you would. Uh, Foreman has taken a tremendous number of hard blows. Uh, but there is such a good feeling about him that everybody is... Uh, doesn't feel cheated and feels thrilled to have been here to witness it. Not the painful bitterness of Ali Larry Holmes. Something much more satisfying. They didn't want to see George humiliated. They didn't want to see him as a fraud. They wanted to see him as a warrior, and he has shown that he is that. He has been, if outmatched, a legitimate opponent. With Muhammad Ali watching at ringside, with Joe Frazier watching at ringside, so many memories. So many of the relics of his past now here to pay homage as he takes his final shot. George Foreman tries to stand up and make it to the end of a bout in which he has been mercilessly beaten by an outstanding heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. get it a lot of people will say beat an old man an old slow old man couldn't knock him out and so forth but a lot of people will say only what will he do against mike tyson that question will haunt him for a long time and the crowd is up on its feet Great fight, great fight, great, 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 great
fight. What an opportunity. He won. Absolutely. Great fight, baby. Great fight. You fought a great fight out there. You box when you had a box out there, baby. Come on. Congratulations. Right. Let's get everybody. Let's get some water. And you heard Foreman lean over to Lou Duva and say, he gave me the opportunity. He won. It was George's way of saying thanks. Okay. What was here? Come here. No, that's my son. Okay. Where's the robe? All right. George, come on with the yeah. robe. Mr. Letterman, give us your final George. count. Larry, 119, 108, 11 rounds to one, Evander Holyfield. I mean, the only thing I kept wondering was what was holding George Foreman up? He took so many vicious shots, left hooks, left jibs, right hands. He, Evander hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. And George Foreman couldn't hit what wasn't in front of him. And the key to the fight, in my estimation, was beautiful ring generalship, a beautiful game plan. The band would get those shots in and move, step to the side, just get away from staying in front of George Foreman. And that was it. All right, here's a look at the punch stats if you needed any more conviction about what Holyfield did, if anything. It looked like he landed about twice as many punches and Foreman landed about half as many. So, Jim Palmer went down, Mark Spitz went down, George Foreman goes down. And we didn't all run off with the circus. In But some, what a show. Yeah, in some way, Ladies and gentlemen, before I give the official scoring, let's have a round of applause for these two heavyweights. 12 rounds of exciting action. Nobody thought they'd do it. And now from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here in Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Eugene Grant scores about 116 to 111. Tommy Kazmarek has it, 115 to 112. And Jerry Roth scores it, 117 to 100 for the winner by unanimous decision and still undisputed heavyweight champion of the world the real deal Evan